Namaste. So today we're going to start our discussion of the Sri Devi Mahatmya. This is a very powerful prayer, and this is going to become the centerpiece of the practices that we teach our students. Why? Because it is the most beneficial kind of devotional service that leads from the very beginning of the spiritual path all the way to the highest level of Advaita. And this Sri Vidya, the path of the Devi, the goddess, is the only one that has such a great range. All the other paths that I know of are confined to a smaller, more narrow range of the Chatur Darshanam, the four views that we've discussed again and again on this channel. So by chanting this, one not only gets material benefit, but one creates a huge stock of pious karma that mitigates all problems and leads to enlightenment. And because there's so much benefit, huh, I'm going to just jump right in and start presenting the benefits that you get from this practice because I don't want to make this video too long. First of all, from the scriptures, the Matsya Purana prescribes recitation of Sri Devi Mahatmyam three times for cure of physical ailments, five times for release from malefic planets, seven times for relief from impending disaster, nine times for ensuring peace, eleven times for winning royal favors, twelve times for overpowering foes, twenty-five times for release from prison, thirty times for cure from cancer, a hundred times for relief from great dishonor, and a thousand times to mitigate loss of wealth and for steady prosperity, etc. Now, what prosperity means from a Vedic viewpoint is that you don't have to work. You can just devote yourself completely to sadhana and in that way attain enlightenment in a very short time. Now let's go on. In the 13th chapter of Sri Devi Mahatmyam, there's a wonderful prayer by the demigods that gives many, many blessings and benefits of chanting this prayer. She removes the sufferings of her devotees. She protects and gratifies the universe. She is the cause of final emancipation, moksha. She abides as intelligence. She bestows enjoyment and liberation. She brings about change in all things. She accomplishes every objective and gives refuge. She saves the dejected and distressed who take shelter of her. She removes the sufferings of all. And she sprinkles water with kusha grass. That means she purifies everything that she touches. And there's more. She uplifts the earth. She slays the demons and saves the three worlds. She gives good fortune, modesty, great wisdom, faith, nourishment, and svadha. Svadha means the blessings of the ancestors. She saves one from error. She protects and guards from all fears and evils. She destroys the power of the demons. She acts for the welfare of her devotees. She destroys all illness. She protects from all calamities. Her devotee becomes a refuge for others, and she lights the lamp of discrimination. And finally, she stands and saves from demons, snakes, poison, robbers, fire, and danger at sea. Those who bow to her become the refuge of the universe, in other words, they become gurus. She protects from fear of enemies, destroys the sins of all the worlds, and great calamities sprung from the maturing of evil portents. That means 
uh, bad planetary alignments such as we're experiencing today. She destroys the enemies and afflictions of the universe and gives boons to the worlds. So these are the benefits that the demigods see and think that are important. After all, they're responsible for the administration of the universe and they need her help because to uh, control the problems that afflict different planets is a very difficult job and it's often beyond their ability. So they depend on her to bail them out when they get in trouble. <laughs> what to speak of us who have no real powers? So then in the next chapter, in the 14th chapter, the Devi replies and she gives another list of the benefits that come from her worship. Whoever shall constantly pray to me with a concentrated mind these hymns, Sri Devi Mahatmya, I shall without doubt put down every trouble of his, and likewise those who shall laud the story of the destruction of Madhu and Kaitaba, the slaughter of Mahishasura, and the slaying of Shumba and Nishumba, and those also who shall listen with devotion to this sublime poem of my greatness on the eighth, fourteenth, and ninth days of the fortnight with concentrated mind. To them nothing wrong will happen, nor calamities that arise from wrong things, nor poverty, and never separation from loved ones. He shall not experience fear from enemies, or from robbers and kings, or from weapon, fire, or flood. Hence, this poem of my greatness must be chanted by men of concentrated minds and listened to always with devotion, for it is the supreme cause of well-being. And she continues, May this poem of my glories quell all epidemic calamities, as also the threefold natural calamities Adiatmic, Adidaivic, and Adibautic. That means sufferings that come from one's own self, that come from the demigods, and that come from nature. I will never forsake the place of my sanctuary where this poem is chanted every day, and there my presence is certain. I will accept with love the sacrifice and worship that are made, and likewise the fire offering that is offered, whether they are done with due knowledge or not. During the autumnal season, when the great annual worship, Navaratri or Durga Puja, is performed, the man hearing this glorification of mine with devotion shall certainly be delivered without doubt from all troubles, and be blessed with riches, grains, and children through my grace. Hearing this glorification and auspicious appearance of mine, and my feats of prowess in battle, a man becomes fearless, enemies perish, welfare accrues, and the family rejoices for those who listen to this glorification of mine. Let one listen to this glorification of mine everywhere, at the propitiatory ceremony, Shraddha, on seeing a bad dream, and when there is a great evil influence of planets. By this means, all evil portents subside, and the bad dream seen by men turns into a good dream. It creates peacefulness in children possessed by seizures, and it is the best promoter of friendship among men when split occurs in their union. It diminishes most effectively the power of all men of evil ways. Verily, demons, goblins, and ogres are destroyed by its mere chanting. This entire glorification of mine draws a devotee very near to me, and the gratification I experience by offerings of finest cattle, flowers, argya, and incense, by perfumes and lamps, by feeding brahmanas, by oblations, by sprinkling consecrated water, and by various other offerings and gifts, if one performs day and night for a year, is attained by listening to this holy story of mine but once. 
The chanting and hearing of the story of my manifestations removes sins, grants perfect health, and protects one from evil spirits. And when my martial exploits in the form of the slaughter of the wicked Daichas is listened to, men will have no fear of enemies. And the hymns uttered by you and those by the divine sages and those by Brahma bestow a pious mind. He who is lost in a lonesome spot in a forest or is surrounded by forest fire or who is surrounded by robbers in a desolate spot or who is pursued by a lion or tiger or by wild elephants in a forest or who is sentenced to death or has been imprisoned under the orders of a wrathful king or who is tossed about in his boat by a tempest in the vast sea or who is in the most terrible battle under a shower of weapons or who is amidst all kinds of dreadful troubles or who is afflicted with pain. Such a man, on remembering this story of mine, is freed from his strait. Through my power, lions, etc., robbers and enemies flee a great distance from him who remembers this story of mine. So you see, I get ecstatic when I read this thing. <laughs> that her glorification is actually the cure for all problems. It's the relief from all misery. It's the, the end of all suffering because it gives great wisdom, which leads to self-realization and moksha, liberation. So this hymn should be chanted by everyone who is actually intelligent. Now, it can be chanted on three different levels, or actually four different levels, depending on one's degree of spiritual advancement. It is applicable to those who are in the dualistic consciousness, to those who are in bhakti, the love of God, the goddess, who are in the stage of meditation, and those who are liberated. After all, it is part of the Markandeya Purana, and Markandeya was a liberated soul who was so powerful that he continued to exist through the universal dissolution and witnessed the recreation of the, or the worlds afterwards. And then he delivered his Purana in which he describes all these things in detail, including the stories of the goddess, how she killed the demons, benedicted the demigods, and saves from all calamities. So this is going to be our subject matter going forward. And I hope you stay with us. You know, if you don't like this, just go away, okay? <laughs> because we are going to experience wonderful relief from all the problems of life. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung.